you will read this purge and bring you guys a patch review. I know I'm very late on this, sorry about that. Um, I was traveling when this patch came out. Uh, in fact, right now I'm in the UK, I'm in a hotel room right now, so sorry about the audio, I'm on my laptop. Um, but I'm in the UK right now for this Red Bull thing that we're doing here. Um, there's a They open a new studio in London, and it's in Shoreditch, if you guys are local and know where that is. Um, and they have uh, gaming events and random stuff um, at the at the at their new studio. It's not really a studio; it's more like a like a like a place where you can go and play games, kind of. Um, and what we're doing is a bunch of coaching sessions, um, like these like workshop things where a bunch of people can come in for free, uh, at least for my sessions. And I assume everything they do here is probably you don't pay to get in, but um, you can come in. And I'm just been coaching people. Um, we did two sessions two days ago. Um, they went pretty good. The turnout was okay. Uh, we ended up getting, I think, six for the first session. In the second session, we had up to, like, seven or eight. But I know the ones that are the next three days from today are much busier. They're on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So if you guys are local to the UK or you live near London, then it might be worth you guys coming in to check it out. Um, but the sessions, I believe, you might want to check the, the uh, Red Bull page. Just go to my Twitter. I linked the, um, the sign-ups. You can go check that out if you guys want to come. Um, and again, there's more on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. There's two sessions on, I think, at least two of the days. I think Tuesday, Wednesday goes from 10 to 2 and then 4, or sorry, yeah, 10 to 2 and 4 to 8 on both Tuesday and Wednesday. And then I think the Monday one is only going to be 10 to 2, but I'm not 100%. It might be also 2 to 6. Double check, uh, or 4 to 6. Can't remember, but I think they reduced one of them because there weren't enough signups for Monday, but... Um, that's why I'm here, that's why I haven't made the patch notes video yet, so I'm going to do it now. Fortunately, this isn't going to be a first impressions because I have already read everything. I kind of had to, uh, because the day the patch came out, it was already about 9pm here, I think, um, when the patch came out, and the first morning afterwards, I did my first, first coaching thing, so I didn't really have time to do it, and then after that was done, I didn't get back until the, oh, probably 9.30, 10pm, and then I had to eat dinner, and then I was pretty much tired. And yesterday, we did a land ladder. Um, the last time I did one was in Seattle a long time ago. And I put a pitch for them to do that yesterday. It was really fun. A lot of people showed up, about 37 or so. We had about 30 PCs, and basically everybody started at 500 MMR. And then we played matches and won 25 or lost 25 MMR based on uh, how you did. So um, it was pretty fun. It was a good time. I lost almost all my games. That was not very fun. Uh, but uh, it was definitely, it's always fun to play Dota in person with other people because you can always talk about what happened in the game afterwards, stuff like that. So. It was a good time. Anyways, uh, let's talk about the patch. Now, the first patch that came out was this one. Um, this one came out right before the first day of coaching. There was a patch the day after. So, um, Aegis now is an alt tooltip that explains how to pronounce the item. I'm not going to bother looking that up because I'm set in my ways. And uh, I will I will uh, resume ignorance if I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, tier 1 tower bounty um, has been reduced by 20 for your team. Um, tier 2 team bounty is reduced by a lot, by 80, that's pretty huge, and tier 3 and tier 4 tower bounty has been reduced. So this basically means that if you're ahead, it is less of an advantage right now um, in terms of raw gold. Um, range barracks team bounty reduced by 50, and filler bounty, buildings gold bounty from 125 to 75. Um, these would be the, the buildings that are in the base that have like your effigies and stuff like that on them. Um, my guess for the reason of this happening is as a slight um, counteraction for the change to comeback mechanics. The fact that comeback mechanics is less possible now, because um, it's not based on like if you're losing or winning, um, because it's more based on what their net worth is, that this will um, help teams that are losing come back slightly, is how this works out. Um, range creep, average gold bounty reduced by three, glyph duration is increased by one to, uh, for another defender's advantage, and melee barracks HP increased by 300. So a little harder to chip out a melee barracks for free. I really like this change. The shrine HP increased a little bit, and now, now is regen. So that means that it's actually kind of worth glyphing shrines now because potentially you could defend it and then let it regen back up. And it does take a lot of focus to kill it. You can't just like slowly stick treants or illusions on it or something to eventually kill it. It does take a little bit of focus from a team. So it actually forces uh, like your carry or somebody has high DPS to kill it. I think that's a good a good change to shrines, in my opinion. Because before I felt like a tier three is dead. Your shrine is dead, you're not going to be able to defend it probably. They're going to kill it slowly. It's not worth defending it because they'll just chip it later and you can't defend it because it's in the middle of nowhere. So I really like that change. Um, rescaled the level 25, 12 to 25 respawn time curve to be slightly less early and the same later on. So it just saves you a couple seconds in the early game pretty much. Um, 
Yeah, but basically towards the end it's pretty much the same. So the, just respawning in the mid game is a little bit quicker, which should mean less reliance on things like buybacks by a tiny bit, by a tiny bit. Small change. Um, I'm I'm just guessing it means less boring time, less downtime, less towers lost. You don't like lose a team fight and then you're dead forever, kind of a thing. Especially if you're losing, better chance to come back. Um, because you'll be underleveled compared to them, and if you kill them, they're going to be dead way longer than you. That's maybe one of the, the benefits of this change. Removed hero class specific perks. The bonuses now affect all classes. So this is one that, uh, so basically what happened was, uh, I was watching a replay with Sander at the Red Bull studio, and there was a there was an update, and I was like, oh, it's going to be the patch. We figured that out. And then we um, play uh, upload, uh, update the patch, go back into the game, and I was checking a hero to see what their status resistance was. And I was like, why is their status resistance say zero? I was very confused. And then I was, because I was hovering my mouse over the attributes. This actually happens very often. If you try not to read the patch, but you're in Dota watching a game, you're going to see the changes if you actually at all look at like mechanics or stats or numbers and stuff. And especially in this one, what they ended up doing is reworking how um, some of the class specific perks work. So I realized almost right away, I was like, okay, strength heroes have magic resistance, which initially, initially bothered me a huge amount. And the reason why is I'll tell you a story. When I was at. Katowice, I think, um, in Poland, I was working the panel with Blitz and with Nahaz. And Nahaz said to me, he's like, I'm not a big fan of status resistance for strength heroes because, um, I don't remember his exact reasons for saying he didn't like status resistance. I was kind of in agreement that all heroes getting status resistance is, or all strength heroes getting it, is kind of weird, but I thought it made sense because strength heroes are often defeated by Kaidin and stuff like that. And um, his argument was that they should get something like magic resistance. And I thought that was crazy, because in Dota, there's very, very rarely items are, that give you both um, health and resistance. And by resistance, I mean um, uh, uh, armor, I mean magic resistance, I mean evasion, and stuff like that, basically. Things that increase your survivability in two different ways. It's um, other than, like, health and regen. Health and regen is... Also kind of rare, if you think about it. There's not a lot of items that give you health and regen. Um, at least not a lot of health. There's things like Vanguard. You could argue, like, Force Staff into um, whatever that weird item is called that I always forget the name of. Hurricane Pike? Is that it? There it is. Hurricane Pike. Yeah, Hurricane Pike. Gives you health and regen, arguably. But there's not a lot of items that are just, like, raw HP and raw regen. The only obvious one is Heart, but that's out of combat, so it isn't really the same thing. You can maybe say Bloodstone, Lincoln, some things like this, but... There's not a lot of those, but so there's there's some health and regen, but there's not a lot of like this item gives you a ton of health and a ton of armor. The one of the few that I can think of is like Crimson Guard, um, generic stats give you a lot of health and a lot of armor. Scotty's an example, but it is only like four or five armor. Um, but there's not a lot of items that cover both bases that give you health and magic resistance. That item I'm pretty sure doesn't exist in the game. You could look at barrier as sort of health, but it's not really. So my point being that I thought what Nahas said was crazy. Because um, the idea of, giving, of strength heroes also scaling with uh, magic resistance seemed crazy to me because they would just become really strong. I mean, um, my argument is that the number that like that putting those two things together just didn't make sense to me. So at first, I felt a lot of shame because I told Nahaz strongly that I thought he was wrong um, because I thought that this was too silly. But the silly thing that I mostly overlooked here was that. Oh, and by the way, Nahaz is right, Nahaz, you're right. Um, the, the, the thing that I overlooked was that really the numbers can just scale based on what you need. Um, and what I very soon discovered looking at regular game circumstances, the magic resistance that you get from this isn't ridiculously massive. So in some ways, it's okay. Um, the other benefit is that they changed the system so that everybody gets the same perks from stats, generally. Um, the difference being that... If it is your primary attribute, you get a increased bonus. It's 25% more for the primary attribute that you are. So if you're a strength hero, you get 25% more magic resistance from your strength than an agility or an intelligence hero will have. So that was cool. And then they just completely removed status resistance for strength-based attribute bonuses. So now the only cases that status resistance exists currently, I believe, is Tiny Ultimate, giving 20, 40, 60 status resistance, which is still really good. Um, but it used to be up to, like, uh, is it? No, or is it? I gotta check now. I just want to make sure I didn't get this right. I think... No, it's 20, 30, 40, isn't it? Is that what it is? 
Are you at tiny? Tiny! Yeah, 20, 30, 40. Because I remember you could get up to 60, but usually that extra 20% came from your own strength as a hero. So now his status resistance is 20, 30, 40%, which is still very good. And you can also get it by buying the item um, Aeon Disc, which again is 25% status resistance. So you can get pretty good status resistance still. Um, but you have to buy the item, or you have to be uh, tiny. So we'll probably see more status resistance in the future, I'm guessing, considering that almost all heroes and cases of it are gone. Uh, but I think it was a nice test. Um, I, I definitely am happy that Tiny has 20% less status resistance. That was actually kind of a big nerf to the hero, if you think about it. So he just naturally got a stupid amount. He still has good status resistance, but arguably the hero is slightly worse. Okay, um, and the bonuses that uh, Strength, Intelligence, and Agility get are also different. There's another thing that's changed. Um, by a, maybe not a significant factor, but we'll, we'll go through those one by one. So, the old Strength. Originally, Strength and... All the olden days for the longest time would give you 18 health. They changed it to 20 to make the math easier. That has now been changed again, so that means 10 points of strength for a non-strength hero gives you 180 HP instead of the 200 that it did previously. For strength heroes, though, they get 25% extra bonus from that health, so they actually gain 22.5 health per strength. So buying strength items on strength heroes gives you a bigger benefit than buying a strength item on a non-strength hero. So that's kind of cool. Cool way to, to start things off. Um, also, the regen is reduced for all classes. For strength heroes, um, it is still increased by 25%. So for strength heroes, the regen values are similar to what they were before in the previous patch. 0.71% HP regen previously, now it's 0.68. But for other heroes, it's much lower. This is like... I don't know, should I do the math? I guess I can do the math. Where's the calculator? This is not going to be the only time you use the calculator, I'm sure. Unfortunately, I'm on a laptop, so it's all just like harder. Um, I'm just kind of curious... How different is 0.55 divided by 0.71. I should really just use the number pad. Um, so it's about 77.5-ish, 4-5% of what it was before. So health regen from strength items is worse than it was before. Um, and now they get magic resistance, 0.08% for all heroes, but strength heroes get 0.1. So the easy way to look at this is that for a regular hero, for every 10 strength you get, you get 0.8% magic resistance. That is not a lot. So if a regular hero has, let's say if they buy a heart, for example, a heart is an item that gives you 45 strength and 500 health. It's a lot of survivability, but I'm kind of curious how much magic resistance that is. So let's take a look. I believe the item itself... Well, I guess it gives you less HP than it used to, now that I think about it. So let's do the math on that, now that uh, that needs to be updated. 45 times 18 is going to be how much HP we get for a non-strength hero. That's 810 plus 500, so it's a 1310 gold item, I believe, if I'm not doing my math incorrectly. Okay, so for non-strength heroes, it's 1310 HP. For strength heroes, we'll do the same math, but adjust the numbers. It's going to be 45 times 22.5. Damn it. Delete one character. Huh. Touchpads. Why? Uh, so that's... They have 1,512 HP. So they get about 200 more health as a strength hero from a heart than a non-strength hero have. Which is pretty incredible, actually. And then we can do the other math really quick, which is 45 times 0 0.08. And that is going to give us 3.6. So if you buy a heart on a non-strength hero, you're also getting... 3.6% magic resistance, which actually makes the item sound pretty appealing against uh, big magic damage dealers. So I would say against heroes like Tinker, a heart is amazing, even more amazing than it used to be, for the reason that um, Tinker, yes, he does a lot of magic damage, and yes, he does so much damage, it feels like heart won't make a difference, but it does. Because if two heroes on your team have a heart, that means that Tinker has to rearm and use combos at least like two to three more times on your hero, probably. You should still have a hood in most cases, over buying something like a heart, but hypothetically, if you're like a really squishy support hero, having something like a heart can really pay off um, against him if you know he's going to target you and you can't defend yourself very well. Obviously, things like Glimmer Cape or uh, BKBs are probably better tactically, but if you're just kind of getting blasted through and it doesn't feel like you can react in time, having a heart is a really good way to deal with that. Um, and now that it also gives you an extra 3.6% magic resistance, it's a pretty good place to be. For strength heroes, we can do the math easily. It's 45 times 0.1%. So that's going to give us 4.5% magic resistance on strength heroes if they have a heart. So it's not a massive amount, 
but it's something. So a lot of heroes that I've seen in game, they have something like 6 to 10% magic resistance. At the start of the game, you walk around with like 1.4% magic resistance. It's not a lot, but it makes a difference. And obviously for strength heroes or high, heroes that have high strength gain, it's different. So one of the things, um, I guess, I, we'll just go through the rest before I give you my general impressions. Old intelligence, here's all these numbers. New intelligence, you no longer get mana magic resistance. So that's one of the big changes. Um, int heroes are no longer naturally going to get magic resistance from int. Which means they have to get it from their strength. So if you are a strength, if you're an int hero who has high strength, you're going to get a okay amount of magic resistance. But if you're an int hero that had a high int gain, you're not going to get nearly as much magic resistance. So it's kind of crappy for int heroes. Basically, they already have less HP. They're going to have further less HP now than they would than they did in the last patch, and they have far less magic resistance, assuming they had good int gain. Because if you have really bad strength gain, you probably have good int gain in most cases. Um, but now, that's not going to be the case. Now, one of their benefits, though, is that they get 25% more spell amplification from the intelligence they do pick up. With that said, all... Um, did all heroes get... Yeah, all heroes got spell amplification before, but now int heroes get slightly more. It's still not much more. It's only 25% more than a non-int hero, but it's still kind of significant. Uh, it's not that significant, because really you're, you're amplifying... Like, at the end of the game, most of the time you'd have, like, maybe 10% spell amp tops if you had a lot of int. Maybe 12 or something. That's going to go up by an extra 3%, 3 points. If you do 1,000 magic damage, you're talking, talking an extra 30 damage with that 1,000 magic damage. But it's still an increase. I'm not, I, th I thought that this was, like, kind of crappy for int heroes as a whole. But I did really like um, the mana increase. This one's really cool. So the mana pool that you get from your int goes up by 25%. This one's pretty significant, because that benefits all int heroes from the beginning of the game in a huge way. They have 25% more mana. At the start of the game, Crystal Maiden has 25% more. Jakiro has 25% more. There's going to be, I think, uh, definitely a period where a lot of people realize, like, oh, X-Hero is really good at zoning right now, because they have just so much mana. Which is actually a really cool solution. I think... The reason that this was done um, was because the game was getting a little too static in what heroes were viable. And I think the reason was because um, everything is very figured out right now in terms of who can contribute in lane as a zoner, who can harass their opponent properly. Um, heroes like Crystal Maiden just don't really fly. Frostbite does do 150 magic damage, but she hits for very low damage. She's extremely slow, and she had a pretty crappy mana pool. So she wasn't good enough at zoning as a dual laner. But now, because she has 25% more mana, maybe that's going to make a difference. For Crystal Maiden, it's probably not, but for some other heroes, it might. And that's why this is kind of cool, because there are going to be some heroes that can really benefit from this. Um, they also have 25% more mana regen than before. Um, for all players, they have reduced by 0.2%, which I think is fine, because mana regen as a whole seemed a little bit too good scaling-wise for some items like Drum Aqua could make you go pretty far for a lot of heroes, a lot of cores especially. So for Ant Heroes, any magic res uh, regen that they actually do get becomes even better in the late game. And this is a percentage increase, so that means any regen items they do buy becomes increased at a faster rate. So this is better than just a flat mana increase. This means any of the mana regen they get and the Ant in, in combination means they're going to have a stupid amount of mana. So for heroes like Storm Spirit, he's relatively happy about this, not only because he has way more mana, but because he also gets more mana regen from the int and the percentage mana regen items he does buy. So you could argue this is kind of a storm buff, but he also gets far less magic resistance, which is kind of a negative, because he did have buy a lot of int items. So, that's int. Let's go to agility really quick. Um, there's the old numbers. Now the new umbers, numbers, the average hero gets slightly less, the tiniest bit less, 1 17th less armor per agility. I don't know what this number is now. Uh, I guess we should probably check, because it, it used to be a fraction, but... When these numbers get changed, it's kind of tough because I've remembered some of these fractions. One-seventh for the majority of my adult life, and now it has all changed. Now it's a tiny fraction. They probably change it because it's not easy. All right, so it's one of every 6.25 armor. 6.25 agility gives you one armor for a non-agility heroes. But for an agility hero, it's every five agility which is pretty good. So every 5 agility and agility hero gets an extra armor. One thing I noticed, Naga has like 7 armor at level 1 now, when I played Naga the other day. So Naga is even better at level 1, survivability wise. Um, also, any agility you have gives you 25% more attack speed than it did before. All other heroes are the same. And um, regular heroes get 
movement speed from agility now, but it is less than what agility heroes got before. And agility heroes got a very tiny, tiny, tiny buff, 0.002% increase per agility. So agility heroes are slightly faster than they were before, but all heroes are now faster. So this was the initial patch. Um, there were a couple other like bug and change things, um, but um, initial impressions, strength heroes got buffed. I can say this confidently because they got nerfed in the patch immediately after this, which I'll cover. Um, they got a big HP increase. Uh, they got no more status resistance, but in the early game, it's really not a big deal. Things like raw health are usually better. Their regen is virtually the same, and they also got magic resistance. So pretty much in all cases, strength heroes got it better. The only places they got it worse is slightly worse mana regen, the tiniest less bit of armor, and that's it. And they also got movement speed. So strength heroes literally got all of the benefits here, with the only negatives being the ar tiny armor reduction, the tiny mana regen reduction, and they lost status resistance in exchange for a small amount of uh, magic resistance. I think that was a good deal, especially because with all these strength, and, and they get this bonus from like any strength they buy, it just means that their hero as a whole are just getting an incredible amount of value from um, from having uh, from this patch. So, very good for strength heroes. With that said, um, you have to always remember to think about this in comparison to the other heroes. So I could say across the board strength heroes got a buff here. Um, how did Intelligence Heroes do? They got less magic resistance, they get less health for their strength, they get less HP regen. Um, a lot of int heroes do are kind of supporty, or they do spell or magic-based damage, which means all heroes now have magic resistance, so that's also a nerf for a lot of Intelligence Heroes. Um, they got more mana regen, and everybody got less. They got a bigger mana pool, and they get slightly more spell amp. I would say that, and they also get movement speed from agility if they happen to have high agility gain. But uh, to be honest, this is this was negative for Intelligence Heroes for sure. They probably got the worst of it. Agility Heroes um, got slightly more movement speed, but essentially negl negligible. All heroes become faster. They get much more attack speed and armor from agility items than they did before. That's a pretty big buff to them if they want both armor and attack speed. So that means agility heroes that have high agility gain are going to be even better against minus armor builds. So things like Slardars... Um, Desos that go, or PAs that go Deso, any heroes that go Deso really, agility heroes that build agility items are going to be a lot better. They might not have to buy things like AC in a late game situation against a lot of minus armor. They'll probably be fine just by buying um, regular items. And in fact, when I played Viper one game yesterday, I played against a Slardar at one point, and I think I went like, I think I went Helm of the Dominator, I think I got a Dragon Lance, and I got a... Um, I got an AC, I think, and I was more than fine against the against all the minus armor stuff. It was no problem at all. Felt fine. Um, agility heroes also get less health um, from strength points. They get less HP regen, um, but they also get magic resistance. So I think agility heroes had a pretty good time, generally. So less mana regen, not a big deal. They didn't lose as much as int heroes did, for sure. Um, with the exception that everybody's faster now, and a lot of agility heroes are... Right clickers, melees, maybe they're not, no, there's not a lot of there that are melee, but many are maybe. Um, so I'd say agility heroes got hit the, the least hardest, and int int heroes got hurt the most, and strength heroes got the most buff. That's my assumption. I haven't looked at numbers. So, with that said, what we should do probably next is look at the latest latest patch. This is the one that happened literally the day after. And here we are. Strength heroes base movement speed reduced by 5. That's all strength heroes. Strength Heroes base armor reduced by 1, except for Doom, Io, Lycan, Phoenix, Timbersaw, and Tiny. For Timbersaw, Tiny, Io, and Doom, I believe they all have zero armor. It shows zero at the start of the game, I think. I'm not 100% for Io, but for the rest of the heroes, I'm pretty sure it's zero. Um, they might have like 0 0.1 or 0 0.3 armor, but I'm not. Uh, but I'm pretty sure they have zero, zero as their icon. For Lycan, he has more than zero armor. I think it was like two, and I think he just got an armor buff the patch before this, or the patch two times ago to go up to 3 maybe, or maybe it went up from 1 to 2, but um, he his armor was not reduced by 1 in this case. Probably because the thought was he just got an armor buff, so we should leave that in. But of these like 5 heroes, Lycan was the most benefited, and Tiny, I guess, were the most benefited from this. I guess, I mean, all of them got benefited, but I'd argue Tiny is, uh, was OP in the previous patch, and Lycan just got a buff, and was occasionally picked, so those ones seemed a little surprising to me, I guess. I guess I don't fully understand the... Uh, why all of these heroes are in this list, I guess. But heroes like Phoenix and stuff, you wouldn't want to reduce his armor further, because he's still not played, really. 
um, for example. So this made sense. Intelligence heroes base strength increased by two, except OD Tinker and Bane. So all int heroes are getting a buff of 36 HP, and the the two strength that comes with that, which is more regen and more magic resistance, the tiniest bit of magic resistance. And then strength gain the following heroes. Strength gain for the following heroes increased by 0.3. Darkseer, Death Prophet, Ember Spirit, Leshrac, Nature's Prophet, Necrophos, Pugna, Queen of Pain, Ursa, and Visage. So that probably means that these heroes, as a whole, got hurt a little bit too hard from the patch changes, is my guess. Um, Death Prophet, I can understand, because she bought int items, therefore she lost a lot of natural magic resistance just from having int items, she lost a lot. And things like her Spirit Siphon and her Crypt Swarm all do magic damage, every hero has magic resistance now, so if she can't do as much damage with um, Spirit Siphon, that means that those people are then healing her less from her Spirit Siphon. So even though Death Prophet is like one of the top heroes, three is, is like the top hero arguably, top 10 for sure, in the last like month and a half, I can see them giving her a buff here, um, because she did get hit kind of hard. Um, Darkseer, basically this this like base strength increase is good for these um, int heroes at the start of the game. It kind of offsets that early advantage that a lot of other heroes have, but it doesn't give them the same late game longevity. They would be slightly better early, but not as good late. So they gave strength gain buffs to the rest of these guys. So this is like basically, this is like 9 strength over the course of the whole game. It's probably a little bit less than 9 strength. It's probably like 8.7. Because every 10 levels is 3. So, uh, oh, I'm actually, no, I did that wrong. My bad. Um, 3, 6, and 7.5. And so it's a little bit less than 7. It might be like 7.2, 7.5 for all these heroes. So that's the extra strength they get through the course of the game. It's not much, but it's something. Um, regen, more HP, all that stuff. A lot of these heroes are kind of played. Um, Necrophos is a hero that's kind of interesting uh, in terms of this patch. It's kind of bad for him, the patch, because he... Um, all heroes get magic resistance now, so his ability to ulti people is worse. Well, that said, because people's HP gets so high now, that arguably his ultimate... Basically, it doesn't matter if people get more health naturally, because Necrophos is always going to do more damage with his ultimate. So, and same with Heartstopper, actually. It does a percentage of, of total HP damage, so in some ways, Necro is always good against those heroes. That may not always be true in practice, though. Um, he does also get more spell amp, 25% more than he did before, so you could also argue that um, that actually kind of offsets a lot of things. And is that necessarily true? I don't think spell amp directly offsets magic resistance. I believe the way the math works is you could argue magic resistance increases the damage you deal. Let's say I have 10% magic resistance, or they have, let's say they have 10% magic resistance. Um, if they have 10% magic resistance, they will take 10% less damage from my nuke. If I have 10% spell amp, I will do 10% more with my nuke. But you cannot argue that 10% extra magic resistance for him is offset by me getting 10% spell amp. It doesn't work like that. Because if it did, when you use a Veil on somebody, it would mean that you deal 100 damage per magic damage. But instead you do 93.75. So, even though Necrophos got more spell amp here, if he's getting, he'd have to get, like, much more spell amp for this to fully offset. So we can probably guess the numbers really quick without having to uh, touchpad calculator. But basically here, here's your magic resistance per strength. And here's your spell amp per int. So for an int hero, they're getting 0.087% spell amp per int they get. And any hero gets 0.08 magic resistance per strength. So these numbers are probably not going to offset each other. Is the way that you can look at it. Obviously everybody's strength and int gains are different and what the items they build are very varied. But um, this is kind of a big problem for magic nukers. Especially because magic resistance has a tendency... The way that it works is it really prevents you from amplifying your damage to ridiculous levels. Like when Pugna has Veil and Decrep, he does way more damage than what he did with just Decrep. Um, but if somebody gets a little bit of magic resistance, like a cloak, it really undercuts how much all of those numbers are amplified. Because the, num the damage that you're dealing initially before amplified is reduced enough that you're still doing 25% more damage, but the number is uh, significantly lower. So that makes it pretty hard. So for heroes like Necrophos, 
Um, this isn't really going to offset things, and an increased mana pool is arguably useful, and he's going to have more mana regen. So things like Sadist are actually going to be a little bit better. This is like, what, 13% better than it was before? Uh, the 12 and a half than the previous patch? So, is that what it is? No, it's about 5. No, it's 10. Yeah, that's 12 and a half. Because it went up from 2% to 2 and a half, so... Yeah, that's like... Might not be wrong on the math. I'm going to move on. Math is confusing, man. It's very easy to like look at things and be like, this should be simple, but you need to like double check to make sure you're doing things right. Science, man, this shit's hard. Um, okay, so that's Ant Heroes as a whole. Um, let's go back to the new patch. Most recent one, talk, talk about some of those other outliers. Now, why did uh, OD, Tinker, and Bane not get their base strength increased by two? The reason is because um, those heroes are really benefited from this patch in a lot of ways. Tinker is now getting 25% more mana from any int item he buys now than what he was before. OD is getting 25% more mana from any int he steals, and he's getting 25% more spell amp from any int he steals. So OD got a lot of buffs, basically, because the damage that his orb does is based on how much mana pool he does. And he steals int, which also increases his spell amp. So the ways that... Uh, that uh, Valve basically put in these patches, or at least the, 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 the tester team or whatever, it's actually pretty cool because it allows more flexibility. And I think that's one of my favorite things about this patch is that it doesn't make things as static as a all strength heroes get X, all agility heroes get Y, and all int heroes get Z. It's different. It's They all get the same thing, but they get better strengths. So I think what this does is it allows a lot more flexibility in adjusting stat gains for heroes. Because now, if you take a hero like Bane, for example, it was just on my mind, I guess. Um, if you take a hero like Bane and you massively buff his agility gain, for whatever reason, you could argue... Normally, in the past, you would say you buffed his agility gain a lot. That means he gets more armor over time and he gets more attack speed. And then you'd be like, who fucking cares? Like, he doesn't need those, you know? It's not going to help him that much in the laning stage. In the late game, he doesn't right-click much unless you go stupid right-click build. But now, you could say, but it's also going to increase his movement speed. So it's like another way to adjust his movement speed without having to buff his base movement speed. So like that's kind of the issue right now in Dota, is that there's a lot of heroes in the game um, uh, where their base stats are just so good, and their base numbers are just so good, that you just draft them in the early game because they're so much better than other heroes. That's why you don't pick Trium Protector or Crystal Maiden, because they are, one of the reasons is because they are so stupidly slow. They are very, very slow heroes, and as a result, you're going to have a bad time if you pick those heroes for the laning stage, and very, for, for some, some different reasons. But then you look at a hero like Bane, you're like, he's like 315 movement speed, he's got like 4 armor, he's got a really good animation, he does high damage. When you use Brain Sap, you damage them and heal yourself. He's amazing for trading. But now, they don't have to, if they want to increase his movement speed, they don't have to do it in a talent tree, which was their only option before, was they had, they needed another way to, like, adjust where his curves are. And basically, Valve has made another tree of ways that they can buff and change heroes by making sure that all heroes are set by these numbers, without having to adjust it hero by hero. Because there's no other way to adjust it hero by hero and buff some nerfs. It would have to be through an item that they hope the player would use, or a talent tree. But before talent trees, it was like, you had to buffer and nerf the, the base stats of the, the hero, or you'd have to put it into his skills in some way, which was kind of hard to do. But at some point, you kind of want heroes to be about the same always. You don't really want to rework them very often, because it makes people unhappy, unless the hero is like, genuinely designed poorly. Um, stuff like that. So, I think ultimately... Even if these numbers, even if you're upset with these numbers right now, I think this is a very good change for Dota that will allow more flexibility and the ability to balance things better in the future. Because there is definitely an issue right now where pros are like, why would I pick X hero? It is just frankly not good. It doesn't do X basic thing that I need to do all the time. Um, I don't know, what's a good example? Lion maybe? Lion just has a lot of issues in the laning stage. Skyrath Mage has a lot of issues across the board in many different ways, for example. Um, as a as a support, I know that Secret plays them a decent amount, but pretty much no other team does. 
Dazzle has a lot of problems right now, where he's just not very strong. But now we can look at, um, you know, his, his stack gains and think like, is this worth playing? He's pretty fast. He's got relatively good armor. His agility gain is not bad. Um, it's kind of bad, <laughs> but his overall stats stack gain is pretty good on Dazzle. So he's going to get a decent amount of magic resistance over the game. But he's also going to have a gigantic mana pool. I don't even think you're going to need to buy. Arcane Boots on heroes like Dazzle anymore, because he has mana needs, but really you need more mana regen, if anything. So maybe buying treads on Dazzle is reasonable now or something. Um, there's a lot of things like that that could occur, that would allow players and heroes to be more flexible. So it'll be fun to try out people like Dazzle in, in that way to see if uh, things work out for the better. Um, oh, there's definitely a couple of heroes that I want to make see if I can make them work, or at least uh, more acceptably than you could before. Obviously, he's going to have less health than he used to on Dazzle, and uh, less HP regen, and far less magic resistance. But a bigger mana pool kind of solves a lot of problems for any hero that has a lot of spells. So, so that's basically why some heroes got some nerfs, is because they were overall benefited. OD is, is the most obvious one. Somebody um, at the Red Bull coaching thing, the first one I did, um, he said that his friend said OD is going to be real OP because the spell amp. And he was kind of right, but it's more the mana pool, I think. The spell amp is good, because spell amp does affect your orb damage, but your orb damage increases by 25% more from the end you buy already, which is a huge benefit. Huge benefit. Um, Tinker, um, like I said before, with Heart, uh, Tinker has to rearm to do more cycles of spells. So if he wants to do a Dagon E-Blade or an E-Blade Dagon with a laser missile, that takes a lot of mana. Laser's like 170. Missile's like 180, I think. Something like that. Um, Dagon is somewhere between 180 to like 120 mana, I think. It scales based on level. And E-Blade is like 100, I think. So that's got to be like, what, 600, 800 mana, plus Rearm is another 300. Soul Ring can bring that down by 150, but you're talking like a shitload of mana to do one cycle of your spells. So uh, if he gets 25% more mana from Int that he has, he is um, going to be very happy um, with, uh, with the patch. Um, and that is why his base strength has not been increased by 2. Which would make his laning stages in the early game a little bit better. Um, Bane, I guess, I was slightly confused about, but I, my initial guess is that he does pure damage at the start of the game, so everybody getting magic resistance is irrelevant to him. So if he also got this, got caught in this buff here, a base strength increased by two, then he would he was already a very good hero. Maybe not played much in the pro scene lately, but he has been in the last month or two, in the last year, really. Um, but if he also caught this buff, he would still be a fast hero that has more speed from agility, he would have less magic resistance um, at the start of the game and the mid game, but I don't think it's that big of a deal for him because he's mostly fighting at the start of the game is where he's really good at laning. Um, he does pure damage, so nobody gets uh, benefited really by the uh, magic resistance bonus. I guess HP or strength heroes are fine against Bane because they just have more HP, so pure damage is less of a big deal. Um, but everybody, Bane would be really good against basically agility heroes and uh, and against int heroes, even better than he was before. So that is why I think this makes sense. Um, that all int heroes got the buff, agility heroes are going to be left alone without any buffs here, because um, they got the medium line of the deal, uh, but that was that was definitely needed. Um, Darkseer, Death Prophet, a lot of these heroes have like really high int gains, and almost all of them are int heroes actually, as you will see. Um, Ember Spirit got it too badly, I guess, because he just did a lot of magic damage. So I've almost been looking at like win rates of heroes and how they change between the first day and the second day, I'm guessing and they use some of that data to, to make some of these changes. But I'm sure we're going to see a lot more outliers in the future. I'm actually very excited to see how things go. And frankly, I, I could talk about this for a very long time, but all I want to do is go play Dota and think about and go try to see how things are working out. I actually have today off, so I have to go run an errand, go pick up some, go pick up a present for somebody. Um, but then I'm going to go back to the Red Bull studio and probably play Dota for the rest of the day. So I'm looking forward to that. All right, anyways, uh, that's generally my impressions and explanations of the new patch. I hope that helped if you guys were confused to understand why things happened the way they did. Uh, so very sorry that this was later, and then also later than what I promised on Twitter. Uh, my bad about that. Just every night I would get back, and it'd be like 10 p.m. or 11 p.m., and I'd be like, do I really want to sit down and talk about Dota for an hour after I just played and talked about Dota for 12 hours? And I definitely said no every time. Part of the reason I don't make videos when I'm overseas traveling. My bad. Uh, okay, I'll see you guys in some pub games. Um, go enjoy the patch, and try to find the new OP heroes. Have a nice day. Bye.